Welcome back, everybody, to week four of our So Long. I can't believe it's week four. We've gone so far. We've done a whole bunch of different things. We've made our pillow top, basically our full pillow, right? And then we've got four different pillow fronts. So that's where we should be. So we've done a lot of, you know, different techniques, a lot of fun. Now we're just going to put it all together. So in this Basically, in this week, in this session, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about putting the buttonholes on the different pieces, right? So we're going to put the buttonholes on our fronts so we can make sure that we uh, can put it on our pillow itself. Then we're going to bind it. So then we're going to do the binding around the outside edge. There are a couple different ways you can do binding. So uh, we're going to use a binding uh, attachment, but you can certainly, we're going to give you a different way to do binding in the instructions too. So just however you feel comfortable doing your binding. And then after we do buttonholes and binding, we're going to actually put the buttons on. So we'll talk about that. We'll do that by hand, but basically we'll show you how to make your placement for your buttons. So I think that's uh, that's what we're going to be doing next. We're going to start in embroidery with buttonholes. So I'm just going to get everything set up and then we'll be right back. So we're going to start by doing our buttonholes and on our different fronts, there are actually uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different buttonholes here. We've got one in each corner and one on each side. So we've got eight different buttonholes to put in. Like we did before, like at the very beginning, you can certainly do your buttons manually and using the buttonhole, the sensormatic buttonhole foot. So the sensor buttonhole foot, you can certainly do that. What I did is I actually, we put the buttonholes into the embroidery. If you can, I love doing buttonholes in embroidery because they're always going to be perfect and they put them in the right place, just exactly where you want it every time. So that's what we're going to do for um, today. Now with that, one other little decision, kind of a decision you have to make, we chose for our fronts to do the buttonholes in white. So they actually go with that background. You can, if you want your buttonholes to be um, more prominent, you can certainly use a embroidery thread. You can use a different color um, to make your buttonhole stand out. Today, what I'm doing is I am doing it with a colored embroidery thread. However, again, it's completely up to you. You choose the color however you want your look of your fronts to be. So that is our next step. So with that, I'm want to bring over here um, our really super big embroidery hoop. Uh, what I did is I put a stabilizer in the hoop and the stabilizers in the hoop only. So that's all we have in the hoop. And then I'm going to have you kind of imagine this is your front. So this is actually the front of what we're doing as we're going through here. What I did is I've got my front and then I've got another piece for the back because that's going to give the stability. And we are going to um, sandwich those together. So actually make sure it's hard to see actually on this, but uh, it's wrong sides together. So you're going to put wrong sides together. You certainly can use a, a, a spray adhesive. You can use clips. I just went ahead and used uh, just a couple little pins. Notice I put the pins inside so they wouldn't hit in my embroidery out here because the, the embroidery buttonholes are going to be out in this area. Now, I'm not going to worry yet about this placement because what I'm going to do is we're going to do one of these. I'm going to set it up on my screen and then I'm going to come back in and where this cross is, we're going to make sure that that is placed in the exact exact place that it needs to be. So we're going to do that in just a minute. So let's go ahead. Let's go over to the screen. I'm just going to pull up. I already did the buttonholes um, for the hoop. So I've already got that done. So um, I don't have to do that. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to pull it up on screen and then show you how to make that placement so it's right on that cross. All right. So let's go ahead, go over to our screen. So the first thing we're going to do is just get back into embroidery. I already have, again, the embroidery all set up. We did that on week one. So if you need help with 
you know, setting up for your embroidery presser foot or anything like that, you can always look in the machine in the help system, or you can certainly go back to that video. Um, I've already, I'm just going to touch the little file folder because I have already made my buttonholes, as I mentioned before. So here are the buttonholes right here. I'm just going to touch that and bring those in. So now I've got the buttonholes in the screen. You guys, if you, you know, again, if you don't have the big hoops or if you have a smaller hoop and you need to work with that, don't worry. You can always put your buttonholes in yourself or do them manually. So um, just I happen to be able to uh, get the proper hoop. So I am going to use the really big hoop, this 465 by 260 hoop and made sure that that was there. And then the other thing I want to do, kind of interesting, just let me show you this real quick. I'm going to go into what we call layers. Each buttonhole is a separate piece. Well, I want to move everything up in the hoop so it's in the farthest back portion. This is really cool because I can select everything, group it together, so now it's all one piece. And now all I have to do to move it up, I'm just going to use my little arrow here. And you're going to see it's just going to move up in the hoop. I could certainly click and drag. So I'm just putting it back to the far back part of the hoop as far as I could. The main reason is, is you can then do like one set of buttonholes here, move them down, do another set of buttonholes and just move your um, your buttonholes down in the hoop and use you know, basically you could do almost all four of your buttonholes in one hooping. So that's kind of cool. So once we have this done, what I'm going to do, and I am going to just move my hoop over a little bit because when I click stitch out, now it tells me what hoop do I have? Do I have the sensor cue foot on? I'm not going to worry about merging. Like last time we merged, I'm not going to worry about merging because I already grouped those together and I'm just gonna say apply. My embroidery arm is moving into place and now my Epic 3 is telling me to put on my hoop. I, I love that she's just telling me, walking me step by step through everything. So once I have that on, I'm gonna touch okay. This is where it becomes kind of cool everybody, is here's my design. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to go into exact positioning. And in exact positioning, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this design, or excuse me, not the design, excuse me, put this little cross in the middle of this design. So I'm going to put that right in the middle of this area. And once I have that in the middle like that, and I want to just touch this little guy, and see this, this is actually gonna give me exact center. And this is like one of the corner points and center points. So that gave me the exact center of the design, super fast and easy. And now that I have that position that I just moved, dog on it, there we go. Now that I have that position right where I want it to be, I'm gonna choose step two in my uh, positioning. And when I touch that, what happens is the hoop actually moved. And what the hoop did is it moved to the place where that needle is going to be right over the top of that little cross in my design. So I now know that I'm in the perfect position where the needle is right there. And that's actually really cool because I don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, am I in the right place? Once I have that set, I'm going to touch the check mark, which means OK. And now my buttonholes are ready to go right in the exact position for my uh, placement for basically this front. So now we're ready to go ahead and embroider. So what's going to happen is we're going to do each in basically each buttonhole is going to be done separately. So because of that, you can either do what's called basting in the hoop you can, if you choose, put a pin through to hold the, hold the um, fabric to the stabilizer. You can use a little spray adhesive. It really is up to you. Once we get the first buttonhole done, I'm just going to do a couple because you don't need to see them, but one, see all of them. 
But basically, once we get the first one done, as we get started, I'm just going to press start, stop. Then I'm just going to let this go. And I am watching to make sure that nothing is shifting, okay? So I'm watching to make sure nothing is shifting as we're going along here. So um, here's my first buttonhole, finishing the bar tap. And then it's going to move, go to my next buttonhole. And I actually don't mind that it's going to stop after each one of these. And the reason I don't mind is because then I can make sure, is everything set? Is there anything I need to move? Do I need to shift anything? And we're going to start it. And keep on going. All right, and once you get done with your buttonholes, again, I'm just gonna let it stop at these two. So once we get done with the buttonholes, and again, moving on to our next one, um, then you're ready to take this out of the hoop. Now, I do, want you, I do want you to watch this when we are here, right in this area, right? So I'm, I'm right here with this buttonhole. We wanna make sure when we take this out of the hoop that you're really careful See how I'm just being really super careful to actually take that buttonhole and not tear. I know it's hard to see because there's white on white, but see how I was real careful. I didn't like super quick rip the, uh, rip the stabilizer. And I'm even gonna come in here with those really fun little scissors and trim that. So I'm not ripping the stabilizer. So you can see that, you know, if I lift that up just a little bit, you can see that there, that it's just that. By doing that, all I need to do for my next set is I can just come down a little bit and use the same stabilizer. So just be careful when you're taking those buttonholes out of your stabilizer and finish that up on all four and then we're gonna go to binding. I've already changed from embroidery thread to sewing thread and also put back on my ankle uh, regular sewing angle from the uh, sensor Q foot. But I want you guys to see, I'm just going to go out of embroidery and I want you to see how the embroidery arm just moves out of, out of the way, which is really wonderful. And then also um, it gives me this great sewing surface. I know you've noticed it throughout, but not only with embroidery, because I can keep the embroidery unit on, Having this a whole extra space is just so wonderful. So I love being able to, uh, to do that. So um, now we're going to do the binding. And the binding, just go back to our very first one we did for the front. The binding is this piece around here. And with the binding, we are going to want, you're going to want to buy a strip, whether you're doing binding with um, our binding attachment, or if you're doing binding just in a, in a different way. And like I said, we're going to put another way of doing binding in with the instructions too. Um, but we're going to go around this edge. The first thing you want to do is you want to cut each of your fronts with the buttonholes on the outside and, you know, everything centered to 10 inches. So you're going to trim everything down at this point. And I like to use a rotary cutter. I didn't grab one today, but you guys can do that making sure that you have that 10 inch square. So that's gonna be important to start with. And then we are going to use one of our Who's Front of Viking binders. And this is actually really cool. It's for quilt binding. However, it's perfect for this. Um, people love this. I do wanna share this actually, this piece comes out. So when it's in the box, it's folded up, but now this comes out and what that's gonna do, and I'm just gonna set this down just right there is when I have my bias fabric, so I've got my bias fabric, I'm just gonna weed it in and out here. And normally I, I do like to load the bias um, binder, or the quilt binder uh, before I put it on my machine, but basically we're just gonna do this first. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this in here. Y'all see I have my my handy dandy trusty stylus. I'm trying to make sure you can see this on camera, but I'm not doing a great job here. So we're gonna do that. 
once I get this started in here, I'm just going to push this in and I'm going to pull it in here. So, it, and it always looks harder when I, when you're trying to do this on camera. So there we go. So you can see I started, I have this out here. Okay. So I have this out here. This is at this point, and I'm going to get, get my hand out of the way and try and pull this up a little bit. This is where the magic actually happens. And it's because of how this little piece right here works. When I pull the fabric into that little piece, I don't know if you can see that, but check out, it just automatically folds my bias. Isn't that the coolest thing? So you've got your bias already folded. So you're making your uh, basically bias tape and sewing it on in one step. So this is really, really cool. So that's how you kind of load this. And then I'm gonna show you how to put this on the machine. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna set that down and we're gonna come over here to our machine. and. What comes with the bias binder, and I keep saying bias binder, it's called a quilt binder, but I gotta tell you, we tend to use these in the education department for everything as well as quilting. <laughs> we love to do this like on the bottom of dresses or think about aprons, doing binding around an apron, really, really fun. So now I've got a plate here and with this little plate, on the bottom of the plate, what you're gonna find is there's a little pin. And on the right-hand side of the presser foot, there's a place for the pin and also a little screw. And that's how this is all going to attach. So I'm going to come over here and I know it's gonna be a little tricky to see. And I almost have to do this standing on my head because there we go. I just got that pin. You could hear it kind of snap right in and now I'm gonna use one of the screws back here. And I'm just gonna put that down. And that's where we're going to attach. You can see I've got two other screws, screw holes here. That's where I'm gonna attach the big binder. So I'm here with the binder. It's going to attach on this area right here. So it's gonna attach on this area right here. The binder itself, when you do this, there is a washer and a screw, and we're gonna use those. Actually put this down. And the interesting thing about this is this slides. And kind of see how that's sliding back and forth. Why that's important is that way you can adjust how you're watching or you're seeing where your stitch is gonna be. So I think that's really important. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna tighten it super down all the way down yet. There's one other piece to the puzzle and I may have uh, just given, thrown, thrown myself a little loop. There's also a little foot that comes with this. If you have a Epic 3 or an Epic 2 or a machine that has the ID, IDF, right? This is the foot you're gonna use. Some of our other machines you can certainly use the uh, the binder, you can certainly use the binder, but you're gonna use a different foot. You're actually gonna use the uh, um, interchangeable dual feed foot, but today we're gonna use this foot. So here's, here's why I said I might've thrown myself a loop. I didn't know for sure with that binder on how easily I could snap on my foot. So I'm gonna try and get that snapped on like that. So there we go, got that on pretty easy. Make sure that the IDF, is engaged for this because this is going to help it. So, all right, we're all set up. Here's that binder and I keep getting my hand in there, right there, check that out. There's that great roll for it. Look at that. That's a perfect way to see how that's going to work. And once you have that, we've got, just got a little example piece, right? So this is going to be our front and our back. We've got everything done on this except the binding. So we've got basically our um, buttonholes, we've got our decoration, we've got everything like that. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slide this in. All right, so what I did is I just slid that into, so it was pretty easy. I just kind of slid this right into where that binding is. And now I'm gonna adjust this. There's a little flange on the 
uh, right side of the foot. And I want that flange to be right, see how I just kind of scooted that over. I want that to be right on the edge of my binding. And make sure you get your piece all the way up into that. And then let's put that down. Okay, so presser foot down. That's going right along the edge. My piece is all the way in. Now, once you have that set, I'm gonna just make just a little bit of an adjustment here for myself. And <laughs> you're gonna practice this at home. I just wanna make sure I'm in the right spot for us when we start sewing here. So I've got that down, got this down here. Um, you can certainly at this point, move your needle position left, right, or wherever you want it to be. I'm just gonna kind of move my needle position just a little bit. And let's go ahead and start sewing. Again, back to a straight stitch. This is just gonna feed all the way through. All right. And what I wanted to show you a little bit is once I get to the end here, to do a corner, you actually want to with the binder. So all the way off the edge of your binding and your fabric. So I'm sewing all the way off the edge for this. And then we're going to pull our fabric out. And what you're going to see is I've got this, basically the binding all the way through. Once I pull this out, this is where you're going to just pinch. You're going to pinch yourself a little mitered corner. So I can almost have to do it with both hands. So I'm going to pinch that, and then I'm just going to put a pin in. Some people will really like to, uh, to actually use a little piece, a little bit of glue on the backhand side. That's up to you. You can either pin, you can glue. Once you have that miter set, so I've got my miter set, we're going to pull everything back through. Okay, so we're going to pull everything back through. We're going to set everything up here. And sometimes, you know, you have to give it a little back and forth a couple different times. And then I don't want to sew over my pen, so I'm going to take that pin out. And now we're just going to start again. And just, you're going to just continue finishing off with your little piece. So you're going to go around all of the edges. And once you get done going around all of the edges, you're going to be finished with this. And you can see, you can make those little minor corners super easy. So they're super, you know, very easy to do. Go around those corners just like that. And uh, with those miters, and when you finish your binding, Oh my goodness, guys, we are at a point where all we have to do left is put our buttons on our main pillow. So um, I'm going to change a couple things out, and then we're going to go ahead and finish everything up. Okay, everybody, we are almost done. And our last step really is to put the buttons on your main pillow piece. So you're gonna take one of the fronts and you did put your button holes on each of the fronts. Center that within the square that we sewed. So we're gonna center that within the square we sewed. And at that point, you're gonna take your marking pin. So again, you really want this to be uh, you know, one, a fabric marking pin that'll go away one way or another, either wash or um, heat or whatever you're using. And then to place that button where you want it to be, all you're going to do is you're going to mark through the buttonhole. And so we'll just mark all the way here, here, and go all the way through the buttonhole to your main fabric. And once you have that dot, everybody, once that's there, that's where you're going you're gonna to go ahead and put your buttons on. So super easy that's your finish you really if you haven't already you do want to put the buttons on the back 
Uh, we talked about that way at the beginning, but I don't know if everybody put their button on the back. So if you didn't, now's the time. Now's the time to finish up with all of those uh, button, basically buttons for the buttonholes you've created. Well, everyone, I am so happy that you were with us and we went through, I had so much fun doing this uh, pillow with the pillow fronts and we, you know, the three different or actually four different styles. It was really great. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, enjoy what you're doing. I hope you had fun and we'll see you next time.